In this screencast, we use a simple two non-interacting tank height problem to illustrate how we go from our general nonlinear modeling equations with respect to the states and the outputs to the linear state space form. So that's our objective. So the first thing that we want to do is start out and write overall material balance equations to form the general nonlinear model. Notice in this set up I'm going to assume that I've got a constant cross-sectional area for tank 1 and I'm using subscript 1 for it. For tank 2 we assume a constant cross-sectional area and we're going to develop models where the states are the tank height H1 and H2 for tanks 1 and 2 respectively. We have a volumetric flow rate Fn coming into the first tank, we're going to assume that out of the first tank we have a nonlinear relationship between tank height 1 and flow rate F1 out of the tank. And similarly, out of tank 2, we have a nonlinear relationship. We have a flow coefficient beta 2 times the height of tank 2. I encourage you to now pause and write the overall material balance around tank 1. Okay, you can see that I've written the overall material balance for tank 1 in terms of the rate of accumulation of total mass of tank 1. That's just the volume of tank 1 times the density. And I've got the mass flow rate in, which is just the volumetric flow rate in times the density minus the mass flow rate out, which is just the volumetric flow rate times the density out. I then realize that I've got a constant cross-sectional area A1, so I can rewrite the volume 1 as A1H1, giving me the second expression. Then finally, I recognize that both the density and the cross-sectional area are constant. I take those out of the accumulation term, giving me this third equation. And then I can go through and recognize that my densities, I assume, are constant and equal to each other. I can divide by the constant cross-sectional area on the left-hand side and end up with equation 1. And similarly, if we do the same thing for tank 2, we simply end up with dh2 dt is equal to 1 over constant cross-sectional area A2, and that's the flow rate into tank 2, which is this nonlinear relationship, minus the flow rate out of tank 2, which is this relationship. And so now I've got my two nonlinear ODEs modeling this system. Now we see that this is exactly the same general form is x dot equals a function of x inputs u and parameters p, where in our case, our states x1 and x2 are simply the tank heights that appear in the accumulation terms. In this case, we have one input, the volumetric flow rate in, and then we have four different parameters, the flow coefficients beta 1 and beta 2, and the cross-sectional areas A1 and A2. Here I've rewritten, rewritten the right-hand right side, right -hand of, side each of, of each of the expressions of our two nonlinear ordinary, ordinary differential, differential equations, equation. just reminding you that now we're referring to the first equation as function f1, and the second equation as function of f2. And I've just written the square root of h1 as h1 to the 1 half power, just to make it easier when we're using our basic rules of differentiation. So now we can go through and evaluate the Jacobian, or the coefficients, of our A matrix in the state space model. So don't confuse this A with the cross-sectional area A. So I'm using the subscript 1, 1 for the A matrix to represent the partial derivative of this functional relationship F1 
with respect to state 1, but we already said that state 1 is tank height 1, so I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to tank height 1, and you see then that I've got minus 1 half beta 1 over a1 h1 to the minus 1 half power for that differential. Similarly, if I go through and find the a12, that's just the partial of the first derivative with respect to the second state. And the second state was tank height 2. And we can see then expression f1 tank height 2 does not appear, so that value is equal to 0. And we also need to recognize that these coefficients are evaluated at the steady state value, so I need to use the subscript s to represent this is evaluated at the steady state of tank height 1. Similarly, we go through for the other two elements in the A matrix. So A21 is just the partial of the second equation with respect to the first state. And so that's the partial of F2 with respect to H1. And you can see that then we have the 1 half beta 1 over A2 and then times the h1 to the minus 1 half power. And again, that's evaluated at steady state. Finally, a22 is the partial derivative of the second equation with respect to the second state. It's partial of f2 with respect to h2. And so that is minus 1 half beta 2 over a2 h2 to the minus 1 half power. And again, that's evaluated at steady state. Now to find the elements of the B matrix, we take the same approach, but recognize that we're taking the differential with respect to the inputs in this case, we only have one input, and that's the volumetric flow rate, Fn. Next, we'll work with our output expression, and this is one of the topics that's probably the most uh, confusing for students because our general relationship, our output, is some nonlinear relationship between our states, our inputs, and our parameters. Now, in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we have three output variables. So in our case, let's assume that we're measuring tank height 1, tank height 2 as a matter of principle. But now let's go ahead and assume that we also have a measurement of the volumetric flow rate out of tank 1. Okay, so that means that our outputs are actually the first two states, H1 and H2. But now the third output is actually a nonlinear function of one of the states. Okay, so we can think of this now as being our relationship for G. So basically now our vector G is composed of three different equations. Let's evaluate the elements of our C matrix in the following fashion. So I've got my element C C11 is just the partial derivative of the first equation with respect to the first state, which was tank height 1. So that appears just as a value of 1. C12 
is just the partial of the first equation with respect to the second state, which was tank height 2, and that does not appear in the first expression, so that's a value of 0. Similarly, C21 is the partial of G2 with respect to X1, which is a partial of G2 with respect to H1. So that does not appear in the second one. C22, partial G2 with respect to X2, which is partial G2 with respect to the second height. So that's equal to one. And then finally, we have a relationship for the third equation, C31 is the partial G3 with respect to X1, which is a partial G3 with respect to H1. And we see that that's the nonlinear relationships. So when we take the derivative, it's 1 half beta 1 H1 to the minus 1 half power. And then C3, 2, partial G3 with respect to X2, which is a partial G3 with respect to H2. That does not appear, so that has a value of 0. Finally, for the D matrix, recognize that all the elements of that are equal to 0 because that's the partial of each row G with respect to input I. In this case, we only have one input, and that's the volumetric flow rate Fn, and that does not appear. So that means every term in our D matrix is 0. Um, since we had three outputs and one input, that means D is a three by one matrix of zeros. Finally, all these coefficients need to be evaluated at steady state. And so our steady state, uh, let's assume that we have the following parameter values. Our flow coefficients, beta 1 and beta 2, are assumed to be equal. I gave those values of 1 cubic meter per minute per meter to the 0 0.5 power. Let's assume our constant cross-sectional area A1 is 10 meters squared. A2 is 2.5 meters squared, and that we have a steady state in the flow rate of 1 cubic meter per minute. So what you should be able to do is find that the steady state tank heights then are both 1 meter. Go back and plug these values into all the matrices that we just derived in the previous few minutes, and you find that the state space A matrix is minus 0 0.05, 0, 0 0.2, and minus 0 0.2. You find that the input state matrix B is simply 0 0.1 and 0, that the C matrix was 1, 0, 0, 1, and then 1, 0, and that the D matrix was simply 0, 0, 0. So now it's always helpful to write down the dimensions underneath the vectors and matrices just to assure that you've been consistent. So now we have the state space model x dot equals ax plus bu and y equals cx plus du with the appropriate dimensions. Remember that we use this asterisk to indicate that we have deviation variables so that, for example, for the x, remember, that was simply tank height 1 minus, minus 
tank height one at steady state and tank height two minus tank height two at steady state. We only had one input variable. So that was a volumetric flow rate Fn minus volumetric flow rate at steady state. And then remember that we had three output variables. The first one was just the deviation of tank height one. The second was deviation of tank height two. Remember the third was the flow rate of tank height, or the flow rate leaving tank one minus that value at steady state. But that was directly related to the height in tank one. Now with this state space model, we can use tools in MATLAB, for example, to evaluate the eigenvalues, the A matrix. We can also convert this to a transfer function model, perhaps for control system design and analysis. And so that concludes my example of state space uh, model development.